I'm Ron and this is The Wrecking Yard. Today I'm going to be working on some more tubing dies. Today I'm making a couple of uh, one and a half inch ones. So let's check it out. Okay, shaky cam engaged. So I think I've got them done. I'm just debating whether or not I want to tweak this to maybe make it come out a uh, you know few thousandths uh, more. Uh, here's my test bar, and I've cleaned it up because it didn't want to go in. And unfortunately, I don't actually have a lot of room here, but it's uh, yeah, it's really difficult to get around that. So it's pretty close. You know, if it had a less rusty piece, it might not be, but I do can see some daylight in the uh, bottom of it. Anyway, sorry for the shaky cam. There's no choice there. There's the pile of swarf out of this damn thing. Boy, that was stringy stuff when it uh, was cutting and it was just flying everywhere. Oh yeah, there's still a whole bunch down there. Anyways. I think I'm going to leave it alone. If I need to clearance it a little bit more, I'll just sand it with some uh, coarse sandpaper, like chuck it in, in the lathe on a mandrel or something like that, and I'll just sand it more. But anyways, so that wasn't too bad, you know, apart from the incredibly stringy stuff, flinging everything everywhere, jamming things up every once in a while, and stopping the spindle. Anyways, this is a little bit thin, but that was about what I expected. For what this has to go in, it can't be more than 2 inches thick. Actually, this has to be slightly less than 2 inches thick. I think it has to be about 50 thou less. So, I'll take a bunch off of this side, like I'll flip it around, take a bunch off of this side, knock it down to probably about 100 or 1 inch 950, and, uh, and we'll be good to go there. But I'm going to Take this, uh, clean it up a bit, and uh, I'll show you the end result of this one. There's one more to come after this. Oh, one thing I thought I'd mention uh, before I unchuck this thing, I did a little bit of polishing on it, but I think I actually made this work worse by polishing it. I think it looked better with the uh, machine marks. But in any case, I had to put a uh, spacer in here, otherwise I wasn't going to have enough room to, uh, to do this. I cut these things to the exact well, almost exact thickness I needed, and uh, that was a mistake. I should have given it about an extra quarter inch, and then there would have been plenty to put in the chuck. Anyways. Okay, so there's the uh, new die compared to the uh, two test dies that I did yesterday. Doesn't look too bad. I dropped it when I was taking it out of the chuck, and I put some marks on it. 
Doesn't too good. And I'm also actually marking it up pretty good with my filthy hands here. Anyways, so there you go. Two test ones and one that I'm actually going to use. And now for something completely difficult. Okay, so my biggest problem with this one, cutting this die, this is a five and a half inch slug steel here. Weighs quite a lot. I don't know how much. It certainly is a good barbell there. So the problem here is that this is, well, it's my only three jaw chuck. As you can see, it's this is it expanded to its maximum size with the outer set of jaws, and there's no way that it would ever clamp into this. It would actually need to lose, oh, easily a quarter inch on the overall diameter, I guess, before it would ever fit in there. And if I loosen these anymore, they you know they disengage the scroll. So now what am I going to do? You know, I've got a couple of problems here because I want to face it. You know both sides of it but I also want access to the side of it and in addition I've cut it basically to the <laughs> thickness I want it to I think I'm about an eighth inch over of what I want so I kind of made myself a little bit of a difficult problem here in any case I guess I'm going to have to use my four jaw chuck and manually center it so we'll see how that goes hey guys so I've got the uh, piece mounted in the four jaw chuck. Uh, sorry I didn't get any footage of me doing it. I don't know that you would have gotten a lot out of it. I just was basically indicating off the side of it with my dial indicator here and uh, tweaking the, the jaws to get it uh, roughly centered. I think it's pretty close. I'm going to face this side off. I'm going to flip it around and face the opposite side. Uh, and I'm going to call it good. I think that it's slightly cocked in the chuck uh, I measured a difference, you know, as I swept across one face of this, about five thou, and the, in the opposite direction on the other side. I'm, I think I'm okay with that. It's just a die. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so, anyways, let's get facing this thing. It's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this thing represents a pretty substantial projectile. So, if it came out of the lathe it would be pretty dangerous so I've got it very tightly in there but just in case I am wearing my safety glasses
So here's our test bar. And it looks pretty good in there. It seems to be going all the way to the, down to the bottom. I don't see an appreciable amount, you know, of of side to side play. You know, like I can move it side to side. Oops! Oh, that would have been brilliant to bust the fucking light bulb. Oh! This place needs a big cleanup as well as this lathe. It's going to need a major cleanup after this thing here. But hey, anyways. So I think I'm satisfied with this one. I think it's done. I'm just going to give it a quick polish there. Uh, a couple of things you might have noticed. I wasn't confident with the chuck holding the uh, piece in place. You know, you can see I have to stick it out fairly far so that the uh, cutter would clear the jaws. I've got a couple of uh, Lexan spacers there. And uh, so I put a piece of threaded rod all the way through to the back side here and it's nice and solid so it was it's pulling it into the chuck so it can't be ejected no matter what apart from that I didn't bother using a steady rest or a live rest whatever I can't remember the terms I'm a little tired right now anyways so I'll take this out uh, I'm gonna give it a quick polish here just on the edges just to clean up this rusty bit here everything else is machined had some problems, you know, like I had it hang up a couple of times. I don't know if that was chips that was binding, you know, against the bottom of the cutter, or what the deal was there. You know, on the surface finish, like I said, I'm not happy with it, but it's perfectly good for a pipe die, you know, just, or a tubing die, but, uh, you know, you kind of always want to do your best, and uh, that is not my best. I think you can do better than that, so we'll see. Maybe a sharper cutter bit would have worked better, but anyways. I also, uh, this metal seemed to really be brutal on my uh, facing tool. It uh, ruined two inserts on this face here. And uh, I could believe it for the first one because I was doing that interrupted cut. And I was probably just pounding it and pounding it and pounding it. But And I wasn't pushing the cutters very hard. Like for this thing, for most of the first, you know, couple of dozen passes. I was doing 10 thou cuts with this thing. Then I switched to 20 thou cuts for the most of the rest of it. And then the last few I did at uh, 10 and then 6 uh, thou. But uh, the side, I didn't do a cut more on 20 thou and it blew away those uh, carbide cutters. Although they may not have been carbide because they came from shars. So they would have been whatever shars gave me. They weren't uh, gold colored like a typical carbide cutter is. Anyways guys, Let's pull this thing out, cleaned it up, and I think I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and here's the feed bag full of swarf that uh, came off of that thing. Yeah, there's also, it's all over the floor. Just uh, driving me nuts. Anyways, time to clean up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and check the description for related links and other information.